Hey, welcome again, exciting, fascinating world chemistry. We're looking at atomic structures. Put this on your notes. Well, first thing we'll do is we'll go through and identify all the placement of parts. So we'll do that when we start to get the glass. All right, so <coughs> light. What does light have to do with emissions? Well, you see the visible and invisible spectrum, we call the spectrum, is how we determine emissions of light, or how we determine rather where electrons are located. We already know where protons and neutrons are. But we have to identify where electrons are, and we use that through emissions. Now, the way that we do that is we look at the spectrum. Here is a breakdown of all the different forms of energy that exist, from low wave energy like a radio and TV, cellular, infrared, all the way up to infrared, microwave, gamma, and even cosmic rays. All right, now, so we look at our atom. We know our protons and neutrons. We have the electrons in the cloud. How do we know where they're arranged at? Well, here's a little quick video that explains the process. So we have our electrons in various energy states, and there's different energy levels they can go to. We call those excited states. So we take our electron, and we have an emission of energy coming into it. That's a low-grade energy. It's a red light wave. It's low energy. It comes in. It excites the electron. The electron jumps up to the next energy state, but once that energy state is beginning to dissipate, it can't stay there. So eventually the electron is going to lose energy and fall back down to its base energy state. And as it does, it releases energy. That energy we see and interpret as light. It goes off to our eyeball. Right there. Now, we're going to try this again, but this time with a little bit more energy. So we're going to do this with more energy. So this time, instead of a red light, we're going to do a violet light, the other end of our visible spectrum. So here it comes. It's going a little slow for me. Energy hits the electron, jumps it way up. Energy begins to dissipate. The electron can't stay there. It becomes unstable, and it drops back down. As it drops back down to its ground state, it releases light. That light we then see, and we can identify where the light is located. All right, awesome. Now. We use two equations to determine this emissions. That fat little pregnant V is called nu, and it stands for frequency. Frequency expressed in per second, or hertz, actually units, number of time away past the point at a given time. The C, or upside down Y rather, is called lambda. It's the wavelength, and it's expressed in nanometers. A meter is 1 times 10 nan nanometers, and a wavelength is the length of a wave. E and the other equation is energy and it's in joules. That H with a hat is called Planck's constant. It stands for 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. C is the speed of light in a vacuum with 3 times 10 to the eighth meter per second. And that's all our values for there. All right, so let's start with the problem. Determine the frequency of emission if its length is 357.90 nanometers. So we take our equation for frequency. Nu is equal to C over lambda. We don't know nu. We know C, the speed of light, is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Lambda is 357.90 nanometers. Look at those. Those aren't the same units, so we're going to have to convert them. So 1 meters, 1 times 10 to the 9th nanometers. They'll cross out, and I get 3.5790 times 10 to the minus 7th meters. So we plug our values in, 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Divide by 3.5790 times 10 to the minus 7th meters, which is 8.3822 times 10 to the 14th meters cross out per second. But remember, per second means a hertz. And that's our answer. All right, here's the second problem we'll do in class. Copy it down. All right, so let's look at this one. Identify the energy of an emission electron is located if it emits a light emission at a wavelength of 475.5 nanometers. So again, we have two equations. Nu is equal to C over lambda and E equals H nu. So let's start with E. We don't know what E is. I'm going to lower some more space. Planck's constant is H. We also know what frequency is, so we have to use the other equation. So again, nu is equal to unknown. C is the speed of light, 3 times 78. 
and wavelength is 475.5 nanometers. If it's okay for right now, I'm just gonna do a quick conversion. That's also 4.755 times 10 to the minus seventh nanometers. All right, so put our values in. Lou is equal to C over lambda, which gives us three times 10 to the eighth meters per second, divided by 4.755 times the minus seventh meters, meters cross out. We get 7.309 times 10 to the 14th per second. We're gonna leave it per second because we're gonna use it in the next equation, e equals h times nu. So we get 6.63 times 10 to the minus 24 joule seconds times 6.309 times 10 to the 14th per second. My joule seconds cross out. I get 4.183 times 10 to the 19th joules. That's where the electron is located. That's where we're going to it. That's our answer. Copy this one down as well. That's it. Take care. Be good. Bye.